Yes. Did you almost forget again? <laughs> yes, sir. Hello and welcome back to the Section 138 podcast. I'm your host, not as always, just for today. Uh, Mark is usually the host, but today I'll be taking over duties as he is on the IL due to busyness. So he will no longer be on today's episode. But I got Mark, not here, but I still got Cock and Poza. So uh, let's get around the horn here and uh, start us off. Jacob Ski, how's it been? Been a while. Yeah, it's been a minute. I mean, Blue Jays haven't really done much, so we haven't had a ton to talk about. Um, but we're getting closer to spring training. I think it's now what, like a less than a month away at this point. So excited to get back into the season. Yep, we are less than now, less than two weeks away from pitchers and catchers report. We had a nice little break, uh, pretty much at the end of the end of twenty twenty three, and of course, moving on from everything that happened there before Christmas about certain free agents. And unfortunately, yeah, I mean, up to this point, uh, it remains a disappointment uh, throughout this off season. It just, it's crazy to feel what the excitement was and the vibe was before Christmas. And then here we are uh, pretty much now a couple months afterward or a month afterward. And I don't necessarily anticipate any excitement or a lot of excitement from people, but of course there still is a couple more weeks and we'll see if there's any sort of last minute things that the Blue Jays do, but of course they have made one signing that we will be talking about today. Yeah, I think uh, everybody listening to this podcast, is that no, what, no matter if you're a diehard Jays fan or just a casual, uh, obviously today's main focal point is the signing of Justin Turner. Uh, you know, this podcast, we're very harsh about the Dodgers. Long time Dodger. Uh, Bryson knows, like I said, this is a guy that I never really liked growing up, but now he is here in Toronto. Um, it's an interesting move for sure. I'll reserve my thoughts for the end because like I said, you know, my rivalry with LA, but let's start off with you, Bryce. And this is a guy, you know, the Jays go well, they, this is probably their biggest move so far this off season. Uh, you know, there's still a lot of, uh, unclear wording around other players and stuff like that, but this is arguably their top move so far. How do you feel about the addition of Justin Turner? Well, I think there's two different ways, uh, that you can look at this. And I think unfortunately for him it's unfair to him i just i think this kind of comes around to the entire uh off season once again but in terms of the addition itself i don't hate it i actually think it's a decent pickup and of course it's going to be good for the middle of the order and everything like that there's flexibility he's had i think he actually is having his press conference or just wrapped up right before we started recording and he basically got it out of the way that he is fine to play any position it doesn't like bother him and he says how it's kind of always a question that he gets and he kind of he doesn't get sick of it but it's always the same kind of answer where he, he'll play no matter what and of course i feel like for the the most of it he will be at the dh um for this team it kind of feels like he's going to be replacing the role of brandon belt and of course a little bit more than that just because of course he can play the infield and he can play multiple positions so they can definitely use that to their advantage from justin turner look Again, it's not a terrible ad. I think it's a decent ad. And of course, he's been around the game for about 15 years now. And I think it's safe to say, or safe, it is safe to say that his best seasons are behind him uh, at this point. And of course, we know him and he was a familiar face from this past season with the Red Sox. And honestly, he didn't have that bad of a year. I mean, he still has decent numbers. And it was, he hit 23 home runs and his OPS was still pretty high. So he can still do his thing in the middle of the order. I think that's, uh, thing that's very clear and i think that's also why it's a good addition however when you just look at it all together throughout the rest of this offseason it's still underwhelming and again it's nothing um it, in terms of no offense to him and it's nothing against justin turner but it's kind of just like it's february 2nd like that's it you know what i mean like we went from Absolutely. pretty much putting all of our eggs in the basket for shoy otani and here we are we just kind of have one move here that pretty much happened a couple weeks um or right after the new year, of course. And again, pitchers and catchers report opens up in a couple weeks. So that's the part that I get a little alarmed about. And then you see the rest of the AL East. We've talked about the Yankees with Juan Soto. We've talked about, um, of course, with the Yankees with Juan Soto, as I was just talking about, the Rays are still the Rays. And then the news yesterday with the Orioles, with Corbin Burns. I mean, that is alarming. And then, of course, the new ownership that the Orioles have now. Before that, it seemed like there was going to be a bit of a problem in terms of keeping their young core together from what their old owner said. And here we are a month later. He sells the team to a group of billionaires. And all of a sudden, that's not exactly going to be an issue for them anymore. So that's also scary to see. 
Uh, and of course, the Red Sox are still going to be, you know, trying to contend. So in a dangerous AL East and a very competitive AL East, I'm underwhelmed still with the offseason in general, just because Justin Turner was the only move. But in terms of the addition alone, I definitely think it's a decent ad for the middle of the lineup. And of course, again, with Corbin Burns coming in this division, once again, I still think they needed one more bat at least uh, for this lineup. Absolutely. Jacob, uh, you know, you always got the interesting takes around this spot. I think you're probably like why like 60% of the viewers tune in is to hear your thoughts on this. Um, so I'm going to ask you, but first, Jacob, also to add on to this question, because Bryson kind of covered good stuff there, Bryson, kind of gave it a full perspective. But Jacob, does this move make the Blue Jays better than they were last season? Just this move, no other stuff. I'm going to throw some heat on you here because you're the you're the, the main show here. So let's see what you got to say now. Well, see, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting you to say like most of the viewers come on just to bash my takes. But um, that too. well, yeah, you're like <laughs> you're the interesting part of the plot, right? Like everybody has kind of thoughts behind. Oh, the AAA. Say. Yeah, yeah oh, like I have no idea. Like, you could. You you were like the Michael Bublé yesterday. Like you could come out and say whatever you want, and I'll just be like, "Oh, what? Like where did that come from?" So well, I'm excited to hear your thoughts here. Go ahead. I mean, I'm not Michael Bublé. I won't be talking about microdosing, but um, uh, yeah. So like in terms of this move specifically, like, I mean, I saw people compare Matt Chapman to Justin Turner, and his you know his his offensive numbers were a lot better. Um, but I don't think this makes the team better than they were. I mean, the the problem is is like you can't look at this move in isolation. I know that's why you asked me, but like it makes them decent, but you talk about what the rest of the division's doing. This does not make that team better at all, and it does. I don't think it makes them competitive enough to win the division. Uh, I think wild card is definitely what you're looking at at this point. So it's it is a little frustrating. Like I like the move. I, don't get me wrong, I like it, but again, it's like you need you need a bat. What did you not get? A bat, uh, or I mean, throughout the rest of the off season, like you you lose. Uh, I mean, it's pretty obvious now that that. Matt Chapman's not coming back. Like, what is your lineup looking like? Like, you're banking on on Vladdy, on Bo, on like, yeah, you have bats, but you're betting on them and banking on them and praying that they actually show up. Which yeah, I, that, I, that's kind of the way this team's built. Like mm. after they lost the Shohei Otani sweepstakes and the opportunity to trade for Juan Soto, that's that's how this year is now. There's no going out and getting creative and trading for a superstar because that's what management said they're not comfortable with. They don't want to mortgage the future. But at the same time, they said they got to maximize this window of two years. This is why I got really confused on the last episode we recorded. I got on that discussion with Mark because what direction are we heading in? This year is now solely on Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichette, just to go to your point there. So, you know, that has to be the ideal team now. That is the only way this team's going to succeed next season is off the backs of those two players. I'm a believer in them, but like you said, now we got to see it. Well, yeah, that's the problem is like we've, I mean, Bo Bichette, I'm not worried about. Like, I'll be completely honest. I think he's fine. He can, uh, like, I wouldn't say carry the team because, like, you can't really, yeah, you can't really carry in baseball. But um, I, uh, yeah, the AAA, that was that was a bad take. Um, But, uh, like, I think Vladdy will have a better season. But, again, the, the, the problem is, is you look at what the rest of the division, what the rest of the league is doing. I don't know if the Blue Jays are competitive enough to win I mean, I know the joke is they haven't won a uh, playoff game, but I don't know if they're going to, like, they could, maybe they win the wild card series, but I don't know if they beat, you know, maybe the Astros or if they match up against a, a, one of their division rivals. Like, they're not, the way that this offseason has gone, like, you put all your eggs in, in a couple baskets, you didn't get anything. And now it's like, you're not, you, like, the moves you're making, like, yeah, I know compared to Shoei Otani, obviously this is nothing, but the moves they're making, just looking at them as those moves, they're not good enough to, I think, win a significant – or uh, like they'll win games, but I don't think it's good enough to to do better. Saying. Yeah, what they're what they're expected to do. Yeah, I think it's Savant. It's Savant is only like what a plus one to the lineup next year is is uh, WAR. So it's obviously not like a, a drastic addition. Now I, I I do have some concerns here. So I was looking through Savant stuff, and uh, he dropped from a fifty two percentile in barrel percentage all the way down to a 23 and then you go to his hard hit percentage he dropped from a 54 percentile to a 37 he's projected for about 15 home runs next season now to me you know i've been saying this all off season this team has to become fun to watch they were so stale last year there was times throughout the year where you know no matter if you were a diehard fan like we watch every game but it was still 
tough to watch some games because they didn't really have that flair, that offense. This is a guy who had a great year last year for his age. He's coming now to Toronto, right? It's a, it's a nice ad, but it's just not enough. You look around the division, what Baltimore's doing now, they are, they're a legit contender. You know, that team, and they're rumored to be getting Snell, and they're rumored to be in the Martinez sweepstakes. If that team could pull together those guys – that's going to be a legit force over there. And the Yankees getting Juan Soto, that team's going to be just as good, if not better, with Aaron Judge. They got super talent on that team. Garrett Cole leading the rotation. Those are two teams right now that I think are in a different category than the Blue Jays given after last season. Now, I'm not saying the Jays don't have the talent to compete in this division. I certainly believe they do. But again, we are left with so many question marks about this team's core. Is Vladimir Guerrero Jr. going to be able to go back to that form that we saw in 2021 and show us how he was that dominant? Are we going to see Bobachek continue to surprise? But again, those two players, as good as they are, they need help. They need Kirk to step up. They need George Springer to get back to his ways. And yes, age and all that stuff could be going in the other direction. And I like Justin Turner. I really do. As much as he was on the Dodgers and long-term, whatever, couldn't stand him. But once you're in Toronto Blue, we're good. So the pass is the pass. But again, this is a nice ad, but it's just not enough. And this is my issue with this management staff. You know, they do a lot of good, but then there's times like this where they're just, yeah, I really don't know where we're going. And we we ran Dubas out of town. Like they're, the portion we found, they gave him no opportunity. And at least that guy admitted to change. He went out there and he executed. And I, I just, we haven't won a playoff game yet. And I'm going on a rant here because it's frustrating. Like, I'm looking at Twitter right now and these projected Orioles lineups and rotations like that is a legit ball club. Like that team is going to be able to hit. You're going to be able to pitch. Now that team, that bullpen, if they could stay healthy, I have a hard time believing the Jays are really going to be up there with them. If they do not get more help, because right now, unless you're banking on the prospects in the farm system, there's not much coming. And Justin Turner is not going to make that much of a difference to make this team excel from last year. It's going to have to be on Vladdy and Bichette, but this team does need somebody, and they need somebody now. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, if you even look at today uh, around the AL East, and this was something that I wanted to mention, but I didn't get it off the top of my head, is that also just looking around with the Red Sox, Theo Epstein's back with the Red Sox. I know like it's just another example of an AL East getting even more uh, competitive, and it's, just, it, it's really hard. I get it, but, you know, this team hasn't, gone at a run for the division in quite some time. And I think that's something that, you know, they're definitely in need for. And I mean, you know, we know that, you know, another guy that the Jays were going after and, you know, unfortunately lost out uh, by the looks of it. And it was Jock Peterson. I mean, I know he signed with the Diamondback a couple days ago and it, it appears that the Jays are going after him for that. Um, they're still, they are still uh, linked and kicking around uh, Jorge Soler, and I know that was a name that you brought up last uh, episode, Josh. I can't remember who was against it out of all of us, including or all of us four in total, but, I mean, that's a power bat that this lineup needs still. I mean, we still need another, you know, I think still this team still definitely needs another bat um, like we've been talking about, and then, of course, just everything else where they're kind of just coming up short with a lot of these guys, and I get it that the market's thin, but you know, again, the rest of the division has found a way to get better at some point. So Turner's a good add, and I should clarify too, and on top of a belt replacement, I guess he could be a somewhat of a Chapman replacement just because of the fact that he could play third base. So it's going to be, you know, I assume it's going to be a year where he does, based off this roster now, it's going to be a year where he is moving around a lot in terms of still not really an answer on second base. And of course, again, not a big answer at third base too, still probably in need of another outfielder bat too. And of course, that can relate to Solaire. So we'll see what happens with that. I know there's some, I guess, you know, some noise around JD Martinez too, but I don't think so. And of course, the obvious one, which was talked about at the beginning of the offseason, uh, other than Otani, was uh, Bellinger. And Bellinger, it appears that he's asking for a lot of money too. And he still hasn't made a decision either. So I don't know the likelihood of that one. But all I know um, is that, of course, that the Jays were going after Jock Peterson, from what we know, I should say, and kind of came up short with that. So. You know, it's just with the offseason winding down now, too, it just, you know, I know that this team needs this. It's just who knows how realistic it is at this point in February, but they definitely still are another move away, at least, I think, from elevating their status from last year. And of course, we, the, you know, the main elephant in the room, too. And the main the main obvious is that a guy like Vladimir Guerrero Jr. has got to step up. And I know that he's kind of aware of the noise. And he said it recently uh, that he believes 2024 will be his year so. You know, I don't know how optimistic you guys are from that quote alone, rather than maybe wanting to see it first to believe it. Um, you know, because of, of course, I think he was 
he's the, he's on the cover of the new MLB The Show video game. So I think that's where uh, the quote came from. And of course, a guy like Bo Bichette's got to do his thing like you guys were talking about. So the help at the top of the order, uh, that needs to step up uh, from last year. And of course, the middle of the order too, it just kind of the same pieces. But of course, Turner is in and it appears that, of course, Belt for sure is out. And then it appears that Chapman's going to be out too. So that's kind of where this team is offensively. Not a whole lot of change and still kind of, you know, not something that I think fans are completely pleased with. But the other good part, I guess, is is that the starting rotation still remains among the best in the L East. I can't, I don't think we should forget that is that they were the best last year and pretty much one of the best in the American league, if not the rest of the league. You know, the other thing too is though, is that I don't know how much we can bank on that, that rotation being that healthy uh, this year compared to last year, because last year relatively, they were all healthy outside of the Manoa stuff. So, you know, I know they've added some depth with that, of course, but you know, that's another thing that you're, it's just feels like there's going to be a year where they're, highly depending on the starting rotation once again to do that. And I don't know how fair that is, but it just appears to be the way it is right now. And see, that's well, where I'm like the most uh, frustrated is like, they have a good rotation. They have a good bullpen. I'm still pissed about Jordan Hicks, but like, I understand, I think it's fair. He wanted to be a starter. Uh, I would have liked him to come back, but whatever. Bullpen's good. Rotation's good. Offense needs work. What did they not do? Work on the offense. So it's like, and that, that's not a disrespect to the guys that they did bring in. I'm not trying to say that they're bad options, but like, you no, know, you need, you know, you need right. offense and they just didn't do it. They needed to hypercharge this team, in my opinion. And it's like, they're kind of tinkering. And what's weird is like, you know, I made the analogy to Dubas and these moves are kind of like in hockey, if they're playing with a cap, like go well, get aggressive. Like, I don't understand the whole two year window idea but yet management is so hesitant to trade prospects. They just traded. Look at the prospects they've moved in deals, right? They won majority of those deals. I'll give Ross credit. You know, when he trades a prospect, usually the, the return coming back is quite good. And we see long-term payoffs, whether you look at the deal with the Marlins or you look at the Barrios trade, right? So, you know, why so hesitant? It, it just confuses me because this team is not getting any younger. We've heard for years about how this young core and the up-and-coming Blue Jays and the stereotypes around this team from the outside media is completely different. I was talking to somebody from the States the other day, and they were telling me about how the Blue Jays are just an offensively driven team, how they could score a billion runs, but, you know, they're not – they don't have, like, the, the defense side. And I'm like, when was the last time you watched the Jays? Because they haven't been that way for at least a couple of years now. The priority has been on defense and pitching, which to me, 100%, if you're going to win in this league, you got to have it. But you also can't count out the offense and how important that, that is – in today's game you know baseball has changed a lot in a lot of ways and now the power is more valuable in certain aspects because one look at the teams that just won right the, the, the Braves that's my favorite team to look at from an ideal how you build your MLB roster this year they got power they got pitching they got depth and they can play defense they got speed right now this Jays team's got a lot of qualities but there's a lot of hidden question marks and to me and I got to bring this up because I feel like this is a good little thing to add here if the Jays want to be an ideal contender in this division, and this might be a hot take, but you know, I'm not going to shut off this episode without letting this out here. But if Alec Manoa can bounce back, then I think this team could really have a shot. And here's not just the, like you said, his, work, his workout videos look great. Exactly. Like, okay. Like everybody's in the best shape of their life season. So across all that sports, was a sarcasm. But, yeah. yeah. To be but, fair, he posts that every year and then this, he hits like 250 with 30 home runs. So it's like every athlete, every athlete in the off season, they feel like they're coming in great. No matter if they're 40 years old or 25, but like I said, if this team can get Manoa back, given the, you know, they got extremely lucky, like Bryson said, with the health of the rotation, if he could come back and kind of be at least a middle of the rotation starter, but have that kind of presence. When he was on the mound, he was fun to watch. He was a competitor. He brought this team life. He drew, like, like another term in other sports, he dragged this team into the fight. Whether if it was going against the Yankees, going against the Red Sox, he brought this team with an aggressive kind of mindset where I just felt like this team kind of played a little bit more um, aggressive. Like even the offense was a little bit more you know, when your team's riled up, you, you tend to perform better, right? I felt last year was way too stale. There was a lot of, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, a lot of, uh, in a sense of easiness, you know, like within the group. I think if Manoa could bounce back, provide that stability for the rotation, obviously you can never have enough starting pitching. So if Manoa could come back and bring that kind of mentality and what he brought before, 
I think this team could have a better chance than I'm initially thinking for them right now. But like like Jacob said, if they do not go out and add something, I, I, I really cannot put faith in this team next season because the offense. And, hey, I love Guerrero. I love Bichette. I'm a huge bow guy. Like, the jersey behind me is a bow Bichette jersey. You know, he's one of my favorite players. I'll watch him any given game. But – they need help. You cannot rely on two players in the modern day baseball era. There, there's two. There's so many teams now that have guys that hit in the seven, eight, nine uh, range that can hit home runs at any point of the game. The Jays had that power in 2021. They just didn't get lucky enough to get in the postseason. But if that team did, given the way modern baseball is, they would have had a good shot at making a long, like a, a long way throughout that playoffs. So if they could go out and get, I, I know Mark didn't like this last episode, but Jorge Soler, get some power in this lineup. Make this team fun to watch, right? Make this team entertaining. Make this team have kind of that power essence instead of the, you know, the soft contact and uh, the fan base getting frustrated again with the same thing. I just feel like we're running it back way too much with very little results. This is very reminding me a lot of the, what the main police were doing for a few years. And the main police, what did they do? They had to they had to make changes, right? They went out, they got different guys. This is what the team has to do. They have to go back to getting that offensive surge because if they don't, then we're gonna have another repeat of last year. They haven't won a playoff game, like Jacob said. They haven't won a playoff game. And yeah, that's what's just frustrating me. It's like this team, it has potential, but like like you were saying, you cannot win, you cannot build a team off of a, a dare I say like Two guys. That's unheard of. Like, no, no, not even that. Like, you can't have a stellar uh, starting rotation. You can't have a great bullpen. You can't have great defense. Like, let's not like. Yeah, I mean, I, I said both should go to the minors for his defense, but like the defense is very good. I, I know that was a bad take, but like you can't have all these good aspects and then a bad offense. Like, you can't rely on winning games, scoring two runs a game. Like that. That's not how it works, and that's what's just frustrating me. It's like, yeah, even Shohei Otani. Like, okay, yeah, he's like like God tier type of player. Like sure. He could fix any lineup or any, whatever aspect of a team, but they need multiple other players who can help these star players score runs or else they're not going to win. They need secondary offense. What does everybody say when it comes to winning in the playoffs? It's your pitching. It's your bullpen. That's how you make a run. But guess what? You know, it's also really swept under the rug. It's the long ball. When you're watching playoff baseball, if it's the sixth inning, first inning, when you see a team, that can knock a ball out of the park. If like if they have runners on whatever, it makes a statement. It's it's just the way modern baseball is. Power is the. It's not like it used to be, right? For back then, it used to be contact, but now power matters, and power is at its ultimate peak. And this team needs secondary offense. You can see that any sport, you cannot in any team sport, you need help. And this team is relying on two guys to drive the focal point of the offense with some secondary guys. I like George, too. You guys know that. I draft that guy every year in baseball fantasy. But they need secondary offense. Bryson, you know my you know my thinking on this. What do you think? Is secondary offense still a priority, or are they going to be able to tiptoe around it again for another season? Oh, no, it is. I mean, if you like, if you look at this projected lineup um, up on Fangraphs, what they have other – so it goes, of course, Springer, Bichette, Guerrero, Turner. After that, Kevin Biggio, Davis Schneider – Dalton Varsho, Alejandro Kirk, and Kevin Kiermeyer. So, I mean, the writing should be on the wall, with all due respect to those guys, in the middle of that order, that there is, you know, there's a need of another bat. And I think it's pretty obvious when you look at it like that. So, I mean, you guys cover, you guys nailed it. It's been a topic of conversation pretty much the last couple of years. And last year in particular, with runners in scoring position, was a was dreadful to watch, of course, and talk about. And yeah, like they never really got going. Like they had a couple swings or they had a couple games where they had it going for maybe like two or three games max. And then after that, they'd go back in a dry spell. And I mean, I like one key series for me last year where it was really difficult and it just pretty much the Texas one. Gave up, the Texas one was the one where I gave up all hope uh, in terms of anything special. And it really looked like for a brief time that this team was going to miss out on the playoffs. But of course, they got in last second. And then we all know what happened again there for a second straight year. But that was the problem uh, last year, that they need that again in them. And uh, we'll see if they do or not. But, I mean, I'll, based off this lineup now, a lot of people got to step up. I don't know if that's enough, which is the scary thing. And, yeah, like, it, it's pretty obvious that this team still needs another bat. And I think they do know that. It's just it's come down to being able to land the guy or not. Of course, I mentioned Peterson earlier, and now they're still looking at other guys. So they're still in there, and I think he's my ideal guy at this point right now. 
But like, I, I completely agree. And you know, it's a, it's a easier said than done. Okay. I, I understand that it's a lot easier for me in our chair right now, you know, talking about this team and, you know, making it better, making a half secondary offense, but this has been a year to year process. They committed to defense. Okay. And now they're kind of tilting the pendulum back towards offense. But Justin Turner, you know, as as much as I like to add from a depth perspective, like Bryson said, you know, the guys at the end of the order, and here's where we kind of get sucked in as Jays fans, is those guys, each name that Bryson mentioned, all has had a point in their career where we look at them and be like, okay, you know what, maybe he could be a big contributor, right? Like Varsho, we never saw that in Toronto, but in Arizona, uh, that guy, he, he just hit baseballs, right? And now we saw him in Toronto, it was the opposite, you know? So that's where we kind of get stuck i think that's where i'll give management credit is you know we really don't have a great evaluation on this lineup completely because a lot of them are still young and there's been so many swings and misses and guys getting hot and guys getting cold like david schneider he he's he looked like the real deal last year right and you know he started to come back down to earth a bit but again heading into this season who knows that's a guy that could have the motivation from last season execute like crazy in the offseason come on having a monster year that's the beautiful thing about baseball is you could have as much numbers as you want. You can do whatever you want if you want to forecast talent, but there's always guys that come up in surprise. Last year we saw it with Kikuchi, right? Another example. Nobody really believed him in the offseason. He came in a spring training and he was throwing like an ace. And what happened? He had a strong season. So like Bryson said, there's those guys at the bottom of the order, but there needs to be something. There needs to be impact. They got to get the fan base back in it. They got to bring momentum. And that's what I mean. Maybe it's Manoa. Hey, maybe it's Manoa. You guys know I love Manoa. So maybe it's him. Maybe his attitude, his presence could make this team uh, a little bit harder to play against. But I just felt like last year was way too stale. And as much as, you know, Justin Character, he, he seems like a great guy. His character and interview stuff like that. Like, he seems like an overall good guy. So I like the add to the clubhouse. But this team has to add more. So before we wrap up, just want to get Jacob's last thoughts here. You know, this is GM Friday. Uh, Jacob. Last question. If you could go out and make a trade for Luis Robert, but Ricky T is in the deal, are you making that trade? No. I don't like oh. Oh. Here's That's the, the right answer. Like I've oh. I know I've I've said in the past how like certain prospects like I, I talked about the 2015 deadline, obviously that's a while ago, but like I'm I'm hesitant to give up prospects in general as but a prospect prospect like that, I don't give up. Like, let, let's just be real. I, I would not give him up unless you're getting like Otani or something. But obviously, okay, like, Luis more. Robert is pretty good at baseball, dude. Like that guy. No, I get that, but like, I, I still wouldn't. He's well, somebody like, the think ballpark. like the rotation. It's set for now, and it's I think mostly set for the next maybe two ish seasons. But you're gonna need another top pitching prospect. Uh, they also signed seasons. Yariel Rodriguez, something that we you know uh, we can mention quickly too. Early January, I mean. A lot of people he, like the the way his stuff looks. Yeah, yeah. he's gonna he's gonna sneak on some people. He he's got the stuff. He's got the movement. Uh, that's a guy they even that start you know, they say they're gonna, at some point. Yeah, they're gonna try and stretch him out. So that's that's a that's an option that you know I, I try to save that more for as we get closer to spring training. Yeah. I feel like that's the guy that I'm I'm gonna tell fans listening to this. You have to watch this guy because I was mm-hmm. watching his clips throw once he made the signing. And he he's got the stuff. There's no question. Working with the Blue Jays pitching staff, I'm I'm totally excited for that. That's a topic I, I can dive right into, going through all his metrics and stuff like that. But we'll kind of save that for Mark because I feel like that's a conversation. With that's Mark. why that's why Alec Manoa. I mean, he better be ready to go because I mean. like yeah. I said, it, it's the presence, right? Like Manoa, like remember that that series. And Ricky's close. Yeah, yeah. I remember with the series of the Yankees, he was calling out Garrett Cole and Aaron Judge and stuff like that. To me. <laughs> That was cool. Like, you know, he, yeah. he has that kind of difference. Like, he makes the Jays, like, I don't know, like, harder to play against in a way. And that's kind of like, you as know. As long as he can back it up, because, I mean. That, that's, yeah, that's he didn't problem. really do it last year. Like an idiot, but <laughs> I trust him. He, he's, he's a good pitcher. You know, sometimes, so. sometimes stuff goes wrong, right? And there's years where there's tons of players. You can look at just recently, this Justin Turner, right? You look at his career, his, his peripherals. There's been years where he's had some weird seasons, like major drop-offs, and he's bounced back. That happens in sports. That happens to anybody. It even happens to the best. So, like I said, I might be the Manoa truther on this podcast, but I still believe in him because I like his stuff. And when he's on and when he's got that momentum and when he's talking trash and stuff, that is a guy that reminds me a lot of what we had in Marcus Stroman. And what did Marcus Stroman bring to this Jays team? Some life, some personality. When they Don't tell Mark that. 
Okay. Like, Mark, but like, it, it's a good thing. He would Manoa have will be. Mark. Yeah. I love Mark, but he, he's the reason we need him here because he's the guy that I usually go contradict. Back and forth. <laughs> like, I'm missing this right now. So, but there's no question know. though. Like Manoa, that will be the story of spring training. That'll be the story yep. of pitchers and catchers report and spring. Like all eyes are going to be on him. No 100%. question about it this year. 100%. I All right, he's got well, it, though. I want to thank everybody for listening to this episode of Section 138 we'll podcast. It was a little bit of a shorter one, but we just thought we'd get some thoughts here on the Justin Turner signing. We will hopefully have episodes more frequently as we get closer to the spring training. Two weeks. If you guys are wondering what happened in such a disparity between episodes, blame the guy in this uh, recording right now, Jacob Ski. Uh, excuse uh, me. No, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the listeners have to know. Jacob Ski is a tough man to reach. He's just so busy. Excuse, I'm, the, I'm the only one that answers the text, but okay. Okay, yeah. Why were we late to today's recording? Let the people know what happens here behind the scenes. But anyways, thank you guys. A we will be back shortly, hopefully the next time with Mark, because I, like I said, we do miss Mark's takes on this pod, and I love going back and forth with him and, uh, you know, his, his opinion on opposite things that I think. It's usually a good mix, but – Uh, Thank you guys for listening, and we'll be back with you guys soon. Hopefully, the Jays go out and make a serious ad because I don't know how much longer I can take it.